Next up, we need to square this guy, but it won't fit in the vise, so we have to find another approach to do that. All right, so we set this guy up to square it off. So I've got a fence over here that I have used an indicator, run along the length and locked it down. It's within a half thousandth over the length, which is much better than this needs. This is the base plate, and it's not a critical uh, part at all dimension-wise. It could be pretty much anything, but I wanted to make it 12 by 12. So we've got one edge that's flatter than all the others, so I put that up against the fence. We're going to cut this edge. We're going to flip it 180 so that I keep that flat edge against that fence. We're going to do this side, and then we're going to come back and do this side, and uh, we should be good. And then I'm going to drill four holes in here. If you're wondering what's holding this up, there are four pieces of one-inch tooling plate under here because I know they're parallel. Uh, that's the advantage of tooling plate. Works really well. All right, we're just going to run a pass here, 50,000, step the cut. So going the one direction was getting some chip welding and coming back the other direction, cleaning that up. Now we just need to release the clamps, flip it over 180, do the other side using the same reference uh, both times. There's the piece of the tooling plate I was telling you about. So keeping this edge up against the fence each time. So I'm going to cut this one to final dimension. So I need to know where I stand here. 12.206. So we need 200 thousandths roughly to come off. Next up we have to drill and countersink four holes in the base of this. This is the bottom of the plate. So we're going to drill and countersink for 1024. Here's a body drill. Here's a countersink drill. And uh, this plate will support the whole rest of the uh, tool which will be mounted on the other side. Flip. So we need to go 200 thousandths for the countersink, which will leave about 15 thousandths below the thought. And we're done. Next up on the hit parade, we're going for an easy part. We're going to take these two pieces apart and we're going to drill and tap the ends. Uh, we're going to start by drilling, we'll tap later. Uh, so these mount in between these two guys over here, sort of in this sort of fashion, at an angle, and they're the trough that uh, feeds the needles in. I've got this thing up on end, and it's coming up to the stop here so that I can just flip it over and do the exact same thing. Um, I've scribed a center line down here using this center drill just very gently running across just to see if there was any twist in the, in the plate just to make sure that I stayed on the center line because that could be a big problem. So I can keep the spacing symmetrical. I'm going to keep the reference to this side on that side. Look at that. That is not the same. What the heck? All I was flip it around, it should be right on the money, but it's off. Well, to make up for the bad countersink hole position, I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill carbide to start the hole. That's it for the second one. And every time I flipped and even replaced the plate, even though it lined up perfectly with this, they were off by four or five thousand. That other one was off by a ton, like maybe 25, 30 thousandths. 
So I'm not quite sure why that was so far off, except I think maybe the plate's got some bow into it, which I'm gonna have to look into because that may affect how well this thing works. So, all right, so we're power tapping all of these eight holes here. This is an 832. I've got the appropriate holders for smaller taps now, so I can go all the way down. I think I figured out what was breaking them. I did a test piece first and had no problem threading through half inch, which is how deep I want to go. Actually, I'm going three quarters with the whole tap, but I want a half inches of active threads. So the trick was making sure that this is lined up vertically with where the hole you're doing, because it only has so much latitude that it can move side to side and then the tap breaks because they're very hard. Uh, got the setting right, the torque right, I believe. These are preset at the factory, but you can adjust the amount of torque, so maybe they need to be loosened. I'm not sure. We're just gonna give this a shot and see how it goes. So we're looking at my depth there. I'm six millimeters in. I'm shooting for 20, and I'm paying careful attention to the tap to see what's going on there. There's 20. So that's three quarters of an inch roughly. And the other thing I found is you really have to clean the flutes well. You cannot risk having any crud in their flutes. So better power than by hand because my mill doesn't have enough overhead with a chuck and the tap handle and a center and then this part sticking vertically. I need a riser block over there, uh, but that would cause more vibration than other times. So. I think I'm going to stick with the power tapping and see if I can just dial this in. So far, so good. Here's another one. I sped up the exit speed so I didn't have to wait so long. I don't think there's a risk, too much of a risk of breaking a tap for doing that. We're down 17, 18, 19, 20. I actually went to 21. It doesn't seem like going out fast is a problem, so I tried it. That worked really well. All right, that's all eight. We're done. Now I've got the married uh, half inch plates of the two sides of this part. I've marked my reference point, which is over here. And now we've just got a whole bunch of holes to uh, drill in here. I should clear the, <laughs> I got awful close to the side. I was just making sure I could clear the parallel here, which I'm pretty sure it will. We're gonna pop on the hand wheel here. This is, for drilling, this is just superb. So we have six uh, screw holes to drill right off the bat. I'm going to go all the way through this material. Whew. That was a little close, isn't it? Gonna countersink two tenths of an inch. Now I need to drill the motor mount locations. I'm also gonna have to hollow out the back of each of these plates well, only one because I'm only currently using the motor on one side, uh, which is the other side. But we need to drill the two screw holes and then a center hole for the shaft that is smaller than quarter inch, but I'm going to drill and ream it a quarter inch so that when I flip this over, I can locate that point pretty easily. That should be helpful uh, because I'm going to, after I finish drilling these holes, I got to separate these plates and then we'll uh, go from there. I figured that was made, as long as I got the drill bit in, might as well use it. All right, so we got the motor here. That's a good fit. I actually might need to fit a little looser than that. We'll see, because I got the belt exactly right, which means it's gonna be pretty hard to put the belt on, because I don't think they stretch a whole lot. Well, we'll have to see. I might have blown this.
Okay, that's the majority of the material. We want this to be a 5 8 inch hole. So next up, I I'm going to ream this ultimately. So I think what I'm going to do is go to a silver endemming. I was going to go to a rotor brooch, but uh, setting that all up seems like unnecessary effort since this is undersized anyways. And besides, it's a 16th under the reamer size, which means that uh, that's too much material for the reamer. So I think we're going to go for my silver endemming set and make that work. The other drill bit had a fantastic finish. You want to bet that the silver endemming that's a cheapo won't do as well. actually doing a pretty damn good finish. I did not expect this at all. This is a really cheap set. One of the things that helps probably is removing all that center material. Wow, that was like butter. And the finish is pretty damn good. Okay, I'm impressed. All right, let's ream this hole. All right. I think a floating holder would definitely help. That looks like a press fit to me. The counter sinks on this side, I'm just freehanding because the tool lines itself up down the center of the hole. I had to regrind all these so they fit. And now they just go right in. And that's it. Beside all the holes countersunk and deburred. Next step is the one I can't come back from very easily, which is separating these plates so that I can work on the other side. Mounting parts vertically is always difficult when you don't have a riser, which would go right here and give me like another six inches or maybe a foot, depending on the size of the riser. This material is over 0.5 thick. It's 0.514 and it's very consistent. I guess they intended you to machine it down to exactly 0.5. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bias the hole so it's a quarter inch from this edge and it'll be a little bit farther from the outside edge because the important dimension is on the inside where the shaft goes because that sort of determines everything. Drill bit, I had to use a carbide drill bit because I didn't have any stubbies in uh, regular high speed steel which is kind of crazy. Uh, so I'm going to have to drill it with uh, the carbide set because otherwise it wouldn't fit even with my smallest uh, <laughs> drill chest here. Boy, that barely made it. If this thing were even a quarter inch taller, I wouldn't be able to fit in my mill. <laughs> I'm just going to take these over to the tapping machine, tap these two guys, and I'll be right back. You can see here, here's my embarrassing screw up with the taps. The two taps broke in this thing, so I ended up putting a hole 1.25 inches in. I actually drilled two holes the second time just because I was worried about the tap breaking and I used a heavier tap and it still broke. I have a problem with 1024s and I'm guessing that I've got either my hole size for the tap is wrong on the chart or I've got crappy taps for 1024, which may be because, man, breaking two taps off is ridiculous. So this is my reference corner. This is a sanity check here real, just to make sure that I'm on top of this. This is, this is the half inch shaft and we've got to go and create a relief for the uh, bushing that goes down in here. Uh, it's got a lip, so we need to go that far in. So we're using a one inch end mill. We're just gonna make a relief going down uh, 63 thousandths of an inch. We're gonna use our knee to do that. Let's go in back gear for this.
Next up, we're going to do a pocket for the motor, and we're going to make we're going to go plus or minus one inch off center, and we're going to make it a quarter inch deep. And that's it for the pocket. <laughs> I had the camera off accidentally. Sorry about that. A lot of chips were getting in the way, so you wouldn't be able to see much. But uh, that's the pocket for the motor. Didn't try and make it round. Could have put on a rotary table, but there's no reason to go to all that effort. This doesn't have to fit that exactly. If I had a CNC machine, that'd be trivial. But uh, it's the pocket for the motor. Now we go to the center, and we put a three-quarter inch hole through the center uh, just to give enough clearance for the spring, uh, the return spring. And that's it. That was the relief for this spring, the return spring right here. And since the shaft is so short on this, which is really odd, but uh, the shaft is so short, we had to we had to pocket this out. Strangely enough, they didn't have an option for a longer shaft. I think that's really odd, to be honest with you. Perfect fit, though. All right, good to go. Now let's gotta do the other side the exact same way. All right, we're on the second one. We're gonna do the pocket for the shaft. Oh, well, hopefully I'll catch the pocket for you this time. So the way I set my Z depth is I start with the quill, with touching, locking the quill off, set my Z zero, and then I always come up a little bit so that the cutter's not engaging. And we pop this up, we're gonna go in 200 thousandths. I gotta say, these inexpensive silver and deming bits are far better quality than I ever expected, especially how sharp they are.